Yo, dudes, Oren here, right? It is uh, Sunday night as I'm recording this. Most of you will probably see this uh, sometime Monday, but uh, we're going to go ahead and do a mock draft involving all four NFC North teams, and we're going to use uh, the top 30 visits players each team's have had so far up to this point to, uh, to the best of our ability. The way this video is going to work is I'm going to go over – each team in the NFC North's uh, uh, top 30 uh, visits uh, they've had from players so far, but based on each team. And then I'm going to go over uh, how many uh, draft uh, picks each team has in each round. And then we are going to go ahead and uh, do the mock draft. And I'm going to uh, try to get the top 30 players in like where they're projected to go as best as I can. And then once we run out of spots for those teams, then we'll just kind of fill in based on uh, – uh, trends for who gets drafted the most like toward the bottom uh, of the draft there so uh, let's go ahead and get this started here so uh, top 30 visits uh, so far as of uh, Sunday night uh, April 7th uh, let's start with uh, the Detroit Lions who only have five uh, top five visits so far the by far the lowest amount um, out of all four teams so far they have uh, Quantez uh, Stiggers, who is a cornerback from uh, the CFL League. Uh, he's projected to go somewhere in the fifth round, according to uh, Broshmo's uh, uh, spreadsheet. Um, if you haven't seen Broshmo's uh, YouTube channel, go ahead and check that out. That's uh, a lot of uh, the stuff that he's done. I purchased his spreadsheet to, as a reference for a lot of this stuff, so feel free to check that all out. So, Anyway, Stiggers, fifth round projection from the CFL. That's one of uh, the Detroit Lions top 30 visits uh, so far reported. And uh, by the way, I should mention NFL trade rumors.co is my source for uh, all these uh, top 30 visits up to this point. Um, and then that's one. Uh, the second one I have here is uh, Christian Boyd, a defensive tackle from Northern Iowa. He's projected to go into the fourth round and, uh, you'll hear me mention his name later because he's very popular in the NS with the NFC North teams because uh, I believe it's the Packers and the Vikings have also have interviews with that same player too, uh, Christian Boyd. And then there's also Nehemia, and apologies if I'm mispronouncing anybody's names, uh, Pritchett. He's a cornerback from Auburn, projected to go in the sixth round. And then uh, Sion uh, Vaki. And uh, he's a safety slash running back from Utah, projected to go in the fifth round. I believe he's a special teams a guru as well. And then uh, there's none other than Kool-Aid McKinstry, cornerback from Alabama, and my dad's uh, personal favorite uh, player, uh, as I've recently found out. He's projected to go in the top 20. Uh, Green Bay Packers, they have had uh, 12 top 30 visits uh, with players uh, so far. Those players are Zach Zinter, uh, offensive guard from Michigan, uh, projected to go in the fourth round. Ed Guerin uh, Cooper, linebacker from Texas A&M, projected to go anywhere in the top 50. Michael Hall Jr., defensive tackle from Ohio State, projected to go in the third round. Uh, Jerry and Jones, a slot cornerback from Florida State, uh, projected to go in the third round. Uh, Christian Broyd, there's that name again, a defensive tackle, uh, Northern Iowa, projected to go in the fourth round. Uh, Jaquan Shepard, a cornerback from Maryland, uh, N.A. for him, where he's projected to go. Uh, Trevin Wallace, or Traven Wallace, a linebacker from Kentucky, projected to go in the third round. Tyler Guyton, offensive tackle, Oklahoma, projected to go in the first round somewhere. Uh, Omar Brown, defensive back, Nebraska, N.A. Uh, Katan Oladopo, a safety from Oregon State, projected to go in the fifth round. Tyron Hopper, linebacker from Missouri, projected to go in the sixth round. And Amarius Mims, offensive tackle, Georgia, projected to go somewhere in the top 20. Now let's move on to the Chicago Bears. They have 16 players uh, in their top 30 visits up to this point. Um, and the first one, we all, everybody and their mom knows this uh, by now. Caleb Williams, qu quarterback, USC, projected to go in the top five. Probably will be the first overall pick. Uh, Kiran Emeged, 
Deji, offensive tackle from Yale. He's a mid-day two uh, projected pick. Dallas Turner, defense uh, edge rusher from Alabama, top 20 projection. Brock Bowers, tight end, Georgia, top 10 projection. Nehemiah uh, Pritchett, uh, I believe I might have mentioned him already once before, cornerback from Auburn, a sixth round projection. Elijah Jones, uh, cornerback from Boston College, a fifth round projection. Roma Dunze, wide receiver, Washington, a top 10 projection. Cam Hart, cornerback from Notre Dame, a third round projection. Ben Sinat, tight end from Kansas State, projected to go in the third round. Andrew Phillips, cornerback, Kentucky, a fifth round projection. Jaquan Jackson, wide receiver from Tulane, uh, N.A. Chop Robinson, edge rusher, Penn State, projected to go in the top 50. Dylan Laob, uh, running back from New Hampshire, projected to go in the fourth round. Graham Barton, offensive lineman from Duke, projected to go in the top 50. Tyler Guyton, there's that name again, Oklahoma, projected to go in the first round. And then lastly for the Bears, uh, Trevor Keegan, offensive lineman from Lip, Michigan, projected to go somewhere on late day three. And the final FC, NFC North team we have is the Minnesota Vikings. They have 11 players uh, so far in their top 30 visits. They are... Uh, Dylan Johnson, running back uh, from Washington, projected to go in the sixth round. Eric Hall, tight end, Iowa, uh, N.A. Dallas Turner, def edge rusher, Alabama, projected to go somewhere in the top 20. Michael Hall Jr., uh, defensive tackle, Ohio State. Oh, he's popped up with Green Bay already with that. Uh, projected to go, to go in the third round. Christian Boyd, there's that name again. Defensive tackle, Northern Iowa, projected to go in the fourth round. Byron Murphy II, defensive tackle, Texas, is a top 20 projection. Donovan Jennings, offensive lineman, uh, South Florida, N.A. Marshawn Nealon, uh, edge rusher, Western Michigan, projected to go somewhere in the top 50. Taki Tamanai, defensive tackle, Oregon, uh, N.A. Uh, McCallan uh, Castles, tight end, Tennessee, N.A. And Charles Turner, center from LSU, NA. So we're going to do this mock draft with all those players, uh, fitting them into NFC North teams to the best of our ability here. Let's go over real quickly how the uh, draft picks looks for the NFC North team. At first glance, you realize, oh, yeah, the Bears have no, uh, pretty much no day three picks except for in round four. And then... Vikings don't have any picks in on day two. So, but basically the bears have, let's do this round by round round um, on round one bears have two draft picks and both of those draft picks are in the top 10 at this point. Uh, the bears might try to trade down from their number nine pick. Uh, I, I would be surprised if they didn't attempt to considering how many people they've been trying to scout. So the Vikings also currently have uh, two first-round draft picks, although a lot of people speculate they're going to use those to try to trade up somewhere in the top 10 or top 5 to try to draft a quarterback. Uh, that will be TBD. The Packers have a first-round draft pick, and the Lions have a first-round draft pick, and both of those are uh, later in the first round. Second round, Bears and Vikings don't have a uh, draft pick there. Packers have two first-round draft picks. Lions have one uh, in the second round. Third round, uh, Bears have one, uh, Vikings have don't have any, Packers have two third-round picks, and the Lions have one third-round pick there. They did have two, but they traded it uh, to move back uh, to get uh, Tampa Bay's uh, cornerback. Uh, fourth round, Bears have one uh, draft pick there, and that's their final draft pick uh, for the draft for now, unless they make a trade. Vikings have two fourth-round draft picks, Packers have uh, one draft pick, Lions have zero fourth round draft picks the lions also kind of i don't think they had a fourth round draft pick last year either um and a lot of that time was uh, used to focus on trying to find a trade partner for deandre swift so it kind of makes me think do the lions intend to draft somebody because they want to replace somebody and then they want to trade them on day three so uh we'll find out when the time comes i suppose 
And then fifth round, uh, Bears, uh, no picks there yet. Vikings have two uh, in round five. The Packers have one in round five. Lions have one in round five. And then sixth round, Bears have none. Vikings have one. Packers have two. And Lions have two. And then the seventh round, Bears have none. P Vikings have two. Uh, Packers have two. And Lions have one. And then the total amount of draft picks, Bears only have four. Uh, Vikings have nine. Uh, Packers have 11. And the Lions have seven. So take that information for what it's uh, worth there. So, But at least you kind of have an idea for, uh, you know, competition with draft drafting people within the NFC North uh, and that sort of thing. Cause you know, one of those teams is going to try to cut in front of the other to try to get somebody that they think they want. And there may be a third year in a row where there's an in, in division uh, trade. Um, usually the lions are involved in that sort of thing, but uh, you never know uh, with those sort of things. So without further ado, let's go ahead and fire up PFF and try to get, this mock draft going. I have already kind of run through this uh, simulation a couple of times just to kind of ensure consistency. So um, there might be a changed pick here and there, but uh, the general idea will be there. Um, we're going to do seven rounds. We're going to do slightly slower than fast there. Select the Lions, the Bears, the Vikings, and the Packers. And then we'll just keep all this, these settings the same there for now. And Let's go ahead and uh, get this show on the road. Gee, I wonder who I should pick here. Oh, how about Caleb Williams, uh, the USC uh, quarterback? So pretty obvious uh, one at this point. All right, we are at the Bears' number ninth pick, and my two uh, people I had my eye on who were top 30 visits with the Bears, that was uh, Dallas Turner and Brock Bowers. Um. It looks like both are in play here. There's Dallas Turner. I thought I saw Brock Bowers somewhere. Yep, there he is. And I think, and I know uh, whoever does, does mock drafts or whoever's a Bears fan or whatever, I'm not sure if they'll disagree or disagree with me or not, but I think I'm – inclined to go edge rusher here because that's the more important position so i think i will go ahead and take dallas turner here for the bears at number nine moving along we are at the minnesota vikings uh, first round uh pick 11 again they'll probably try to move up and get a quarterback but uh, they haven't had a top 30 visit with a quarterback yet um but i think based on who they have visited with already. Where is he? Is a defensive lineman, Byron Murphy. That's who I want here. Arguably the best defensive lineman in the crap, uh, class, depending on if you prefer him or Newton. But Byron Murphy is a top 30 visit for the Vikings so far. So we're going with him there. And we're back with the Vikings again. I picked 23 when they... Uh, acquired a pick that was originally Cleveland's, but then wound up to being Houston's, and now it's uh, Minnesota's again. And I, from looking at Minnesota's uh, top 30 visits, there isn't too many people who are like first round projections uh, there. So I think I'm going to have to do a huge reach here just for the sake of staying consistent with the rules of this mock draft. And I think I'm going to have to reach really heavily and go ahead and get someone they have visited with and Marshawn Nealon, who is a projected second round, third round type of person, but we're getting him uh, all the way late in the first round ish area. And we have arrived to the Packers first uh, pick here. And uh, traditionally in recent years, they always tend to draft defense in the first round. And that's what I would have done here, but, in doing the previous simulations already, I realized like they've visited with two first round ish offensive tackle types. And then um, after that, like it was a lot of day two, day three players, which like meant a lot of reaches for the Packers. So for this time, it made sense for me to go with one of the offensive linemen here. And then the two 
that I had my eye on for Green Bay that uh, would be good, uh, decent value in this spot, I think, would be Tyler Guyton, offensive tackle from Oklahoma, or uh, Amarius Mims, offensive tackle from Georgia. So let's see if either one of those guys has been drafted yet. Mims has been drafted. And OT. Tyler Guyton, there he is. So Mims was my first choice for here when I did previous ones, but he's already gone. So I'll go with Tyler Guyton here for Oklahoma, for the Packers. And we have, <clears throat> excuse me a second. Arrived to the Detroit Lions first pick in the first round, and we are going with Kool-Aid McKinstry, the person who recently made the news recently because he is a Detroit Lions top 30 visit and who my dad texted me, uh, dude, I think uh, they're going to draft Kool-Aid McKinstry. And I replied, yeah, maybe if he makes it to the Lions at 29, because a lot of other teams uh, could still uh, get the Kool-Aid guy um, before the Lions spot the 29. But um, for right now, let's uh, go ahead and draft him here. Mm, that's good Gatorade. What? Yeah, that's right. I pour my Gatorade out of the bottle and into a cup. That's how I like to drink it. Sue me. All right, Packers again, second round at pick 41. I've been hearing that one of their biggest needs, or arguably their biggest need, is linebacker and uh, one of the earliest uh, people in the top 30 visits, one of the first ones that they did was none other than uh, Edgar and Cooper from Texas A&M, I believe. So let's see if he's still on the board. Yep, there he is, pick uh, 62. So um, is it possible that they reach for him in the first round um, like they did with Quay Walker a couple of uh, drafts ago uh, when Quay Walker was projected third round, second round, but then they drafted in the first round? I'm not sure because I think when the Packers did that, they kind of did it out of the spite of the Lions who drafted Jamison Williams, and apparently the Packers really wanted him. So they wound up reaching and getting Quay Walker uh, uh, as payback for that in their minds. But um, that's neither here nor there from a couple of years ago. But uh, um, I think, yeah, Edgar and Cooper is the linebacker that appears to – be that pick there and yep 33 percent uh, most drafted by uh for pff subscribers for packers for this one so we're gonna go ahead and draft this linebacker to the packers here and i may double dip and triple dip in uh positions for certain teams just um because they're top 30 people and it would probably give kind of a shape or an idea or a picture of uh what certain players drafted by certain teams will look like in certain rounds of the draft based on these visits here. So hopefully people find that useful um, when trying to figure things out later on. And we're back with the Packers second, second round pick. That's the second consecutive year that they've had two second round picks. A lot of twos in there. Interesting there. And then for this one, uh, Jerry and Jones, he's a slot cornerback from Florida state. I don't think he's been drafted yet. Nope, there he is. That's uh, He's another visit there, so I have him uh, going here. Um, the Packers might see him as the answer to Amon Ross St. Brown, who plays uh, slot corner. That might be what they're thinking. Either that or they go after Michigan's slot cornerback for that purpose. But, uh, yeah, I, I think if any of these uh, other NFC North teams are smart, they'll try to find a really good slot cornerback to – uh, try to handle Amon Ross St. Brown, but good luck with that because so far he's been the Derek Jeter of uh, football, in my opinion. And we're back with the Lions, and it's their second round pick, uh, pick 61. And I know most people tend to draft offensive guard for the Lions at this point. Uh, I've looked at that uh, quite a bit too in my own time, um, but we're staying consistent with uh, uh, what I said about top 30 stuff, and I'm going to go with uh, arguably the most popular uh, player from in the NFC North based on all this. And I'm going to, 
There he is, Christian Boyd. I think I'm going to get him here. Um, it'll, it'll be kind of like a Josh Pascal type of uh, pick there. Um, I, I mean, if they really value him, but he seems like a really – Seems like a really good pe gap penetrator type of a uh, defensive uh, tackle there. So I can see why everybody li li likes him. Plus he plays in a local college uh, to all the NFC North teams local to them. So very easy to go and uh, scout him when you can, I guess. And back to back Lions picks uh, early third rounder with the Minnesota pick part of the TJ Hawkinson trade there. And then this one I'm going with, Lions don't have very many top 30 uh, ones. So I'm kind of at the point where I'm trying to reach to fill up and complete like all five of them as best I can. Uh, I don't think Diggers is on the PFF system, but you were doing the best we can. And then I'll probably have to start just going by, off of trends with drafting. But uh, I know for this one, position of safety. Is where we're going here. Oh, Cameron Kinchins. Hello, my draft crush. But because Sion Vaki, I believe he's a special teams guru. Uh, backfields, range line speed, blah, 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 precise route runner. Um, determined runner, yards after contact. Oh, this must be his profile about being a running back. I guess he's a dual threat player, like a uh, that baseball player guy. It says safety right here, but it looks like he's profiling as a running back there. If he uh, if he is fully committed to playing running back in the NFL, he has physical gifts, athletic ability, playmaker's vision, a contributed player out of the backfield. But I'm thinking. This guy might make a special teams guru, which is why the Lions might be interested in him here. So, and that's partly why he's, yeah, because they love versatility and uh, taking versatility to the extreme because they had Rodrigo play fullback uh, last season when in the first season he was a starting linebacker. So, let's get Vaki here just for this draft for now. So, And we're back with the Bears with one of their uh, few uh, draft picks here. Um, I almost forgot who I got with it. I think because I did not, I didn't, I went with edge rusher instead of the tight end. So I'm going to go with the other tight end that uh, was a top 30 visit. And one of, I think the only other player that's projected in the third round, which is where we're at right now. Um, and I'm going to look him up here. Yep, Ben Sinat, uh, tight end from Kansas State, and I'll just get him here. And I know the Bears have Cole Clement. He's the uh, clubbing, home run, uh, touchdown celebrating uh, type of uh, tight end, but um, apparently the Bears are meeting with tight ends. So, uh, and this could be somebody that they draft at this spot in the draft. So, um, you heard it here first, if that's what it turns out to be. So Ben Sinat, so the Bears at pick 75. And Green Bay Packers, uh, third round pick at pick 88. Their first of uh, two in the third round. So somehow the Packers have done a good job of, uh, you know, collecting uh, these extra picks in the second and third rounds on the day twos and stuff like that. So... They have a lot of uh, flexibility to go up and down in the draft and do whatever they choose to. So uh, good for them there. Um, all right. I think I'm going to go with another uh, player that's popular with a lot of people here. If he's still on the board. Um, wait. There he is. Michael Hall Jr. Um, the guy who I think is like the... Uh, uh, that running back from uh, Pittsburgh uh, last year, uh, the college Pittsburgh, who was like, you know, smaller, but like super quick and uh, getting the pass rush. My, his name escapes me at the moment, but this is the guy who I think is that version of that. He's a basketball body type of player, but he's really good at uh, uh, pressuring the quarterback and getting through that way. And uh, not necessarily the best at like the running game, but like being able to get break through and get pressure on a more consistent uh 
basis. And that's Michael Hall Jr. from Ohio State. So um, I believe the Bears uh, have a visit top 30 with it, visit with him at all as well as with the Packers. But for this instance, I'll go with him with the Packers here. So. And then I think uh, Packers have another one here. They could also go linebacker in this spot. And I think this is where I'll start doubling down on linebacker for them. Um, and then Trayvon Wallace is who I'm looking for. It's possible he might have already been drafted. He's not popping up in here. I think if say it so, it might be true. He's already been drafted. Or he just doesn't exist in PFF yet. Hmm. Oh, no, there he is. He's just ranked very, very low by PFF. So they'll probably give me enough for this grade. But, uh, you know, for the sake of uh, trying to get the top 30 players into this draft as best I can, we're going to have to reach and get him right here. So Trevin Wiles, there you go at 91. And into the fourth round we go. Pick 108, Minnesota Vikings. Um Abdonovan Jennings, I believe, is somebody that they have here. Let's see if he's still there. Yep, and this will be another reach uh, uh, from PFF standards to 38, but we're going to get him here uh, from USF, offensive tackle. And there you go. And who are we at now? The Bears, 122. Um, there's two cornerbacks that I like at this spot, depending on who's available. That would be Cam Hart or Elijah Jones, depending on which one's available. So let's look at cornerback real quick here for the Bears. There's both of them. So let's look, take a quick look at both of them here. Cam Jones is six foot two, two oh seven. Uh, they say Hart brings ideal size to the outside cornerback spot. There are some natural movement concerns that come in with the bigger body, but when he anticipates he can play as a reliable level as a rotational cornerback, that's good to know. Good to know. Trends Steelers want him. So do the Vikings fans and Chargers fans. Uh, fantastic length and size to hold up against press coverage. Brings a willingness to support run defense. That's good. Competitive player. Um, a good feel for spacing enough coverage from zone. Long speed's a concern. Acceleration is more buildup uh, than it is twitchy, which affects recovery speed. And the start and stop ability is just okay, uh, and but not elite for his size. Okay, that's good to for, know for Cam Hart. And then Elijah Jones. It looks like they don't have much to say about him there, but he is 6'2 and 184. So he's lighter than Cam Hart. Um, coverage grade, though, is 89.8, which is really good. Man coverage is 90.8, which is also very good. Um, this is the fourth round. I think I'll go with Cam Hart for this. The Bears have visited with him, so um, he will go there. Packers, 126 in round four. Um, this is something that, uh, Detroit, uh, Michigan people are going to get upset about because they tend to like to draft uh, Michigan offensive linemen on day three when they don't know who to look for. Um, uh, no offense to anybody with that, but, uh, um, but this is a guy double Z's double Z is my nickname for this particular player. And I've seen his name pop up quite a bit in mock drafts recently. Zach Zinter, guard from uh, Michigan. So he's been quietly getting more and more popular uh, 
on the internet with the mock drafts and uh, the Packers, I believe he might've been the very first uh, top 30 visit uh, reported for the Packers. Uh, um, if I remember right, um, but I'm going to go with Zach Zinter here. And the Vikings are here. I picked number 129. Uh, the last NFC North team to pick in round four. And who did I have them going with here? Uh, center Charles Turner was somebody popular in this spot. Let's see if he's still there. Oh, yep, he's another reach. He's uh, another reach here, and we're trying to fit him into the top 30. So um, Charles Turner, center LSU, here you go to the Vikings. Vikings tend to draft a lot of people from LSU, I think. Um, I might have to go back and look at that, but something I've noticed. Skip, 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 skip. And after a period of uh, waiting, uh, we are here at round five. Pick one is 57 with the Vikings. And we're going to start to see some uh, trends and like almost very uh, nearly back to back to back picks with certain NFC North teams where like certain teams are just about right in front of the other and then another team right behind it and so on and so forth. So which might be a very good place to kind of look for trades to kind of cut in front of each other or to move back from uh, maybe a little bit of competition there, a uh, little day three competition for those certain spots. But this is kind of starting to become the area where things like that might happen. Uh, 157. Who did I go with here? Oh, yes. Running back Dylan Johnson. And he should be on here, I think. Yep, uh, from Washington. So they've had an interview. So there you go, Minnesota. You get a running back that you've had visit you. Detroit Lions at 164. And I'm going to go with the Stiggers. The, the CFL player is not in the system of PFF last I checked. So I think we're going to have to go without him with this draft, but I am going to try to draft the last player that they've had because they've only had like what five uh, top 30 visits. So the last player that I can think of that's would be on there for them. And that is where am I at? 164. Oh, yep. Uh, Pritchett from Auburn. I want to take a quick look at his stuff here. Coverage grades, fair. Um, Zone coverage grade is fair. Uh, completion percentage, 42.6%, which I guess PFF likes a lot there. Trends, Vikings like him, Seahawks like him, Lions like him, I guess. As knife's first step, acceleration, allowing him to close downhill quickly. Hips are decently fluid for a player over six foot. <clears throat> um, 6-1, 184. Okay. Pitcher's quickness and speed teams... Special teams experience. Okay, special teams. Uh, so that might be another uh, special teams value player for the Lions if they decide to stock up on special teams type of people. Uh, make him a cornerback to draft and develop, but unless he gets stronger, he will be tough to keep him on the field in a full-time role in the NFL. So he's got to put on weight. So what it looks like, but um, he's interviewed with the Lions top 30. So we're going to go with him here for now. Vikings pick 167 and this uh, I believe the Vikings are out of players with uh with top 30 visits um at this point and any other players that they would have wanted to draft are already gone so this is the point I think where we're going to just start uh switching gears and going based on uh trends uh for players who's trended uh drafting the Vikings the most you'll see what I mean here in a second All right. Come on there. So we're looking over here. And if we see the Vikings logo over here, that means they're a popular pick for Vikings. And we're just going to go based on that at this point because we're doing seven rounds. Vikings, 8%. All right, that's decent. Let's keep looking and see if we get like a unanimously popular one. All right. Uh, 
This one's leading by a good whopping 2% there. Uh, Dallin Hawker, tight end. I guess someone to back up TJ Hawkinson there. So, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Green Bay Packers, pick 169. Uh, there's a safety. I think, yep, he's still available. He's another reach pick, but he's still there from Oregon State. Same place where Luke, Luke Mustrave came from. And there he goes to there. Starting round six, uh, Minnesota Vikings at 177. So we've already established that the – I think the Vikings are out of people. I just said that, right? Yeah. All right. Jordan Davis, nobody likes him from the Vikings. Uh, there's Dylan Lovey, he's 12% there. Packers kind of like him there, too. Uh, oh, here's somebody who they really like. Uh, another Michigan uh, lineman. Uh, Vikings fans really like him there. So, center, uh, Drake Nugent. So, uh, I think we'll just go ahead and do that there. Get through this quickly. Troy Lions are on the clock, and the Lions, this is around six, and also at this point, we're uh, going with uh, who is trending to them the most. Okay, there's a candidate there. Casey Washington was somebody I noticed uh, from a couple simulations ago who was a good spot here, but I just saw that he was just taken, so tied for 9% there. Um, Ooh, 16% for Lions there. This one's very popular with that. Brendan Jackson, edge rusher. I haven't done the edge rusher for the Lions yet, and the Packers also want him there, and the Seahawks want him there too. So we got to beat the Seahawks too. Uh, I, they're not part of this, but the Seahawks are very much on my mind ever since the Witherspoon from last season. So I'll go ahead and get Brendan Jackson here. Get some edge rusher depth for the Lions. Oh, and right behind them is Packers. So here's those consecutive back-to-back -back runs I was talking about. And the Packers, I think, still have... Um, yeah, the Packers still have top 30 people um, available. So... Yep, there he is. Line We're tripling down on linebacker. Tyron Hopper, linebacker from Missouri. We're going to go ahead and get him here for the Packers. Pick 205 for the Lions. Uh, Hunter Nozard. I did pass on him earlier, but he's still unanimously a good pick here for the Lions. So I guess I'll draft him here. Get some O-line depth. And if you can play center, you can play guard and vice versa. That is the general rule I am going with, with uh, drafting these offensive linemen. And then 219, this is where we start to do trends for the Packers because when I did the simulation a couple of times, they were out of uh, top 30 players. They're top 30 players at this point. But I think I know who they're really going to want. Yep, here it is. Uh, Tanner Bortolini, center from Wisconsin. Um, you know, Wisconsin native, Green Bay's in Wisconsin and all that stuff. So um, similar to how Lions, uh, people like to mock the Michigan uh, uh, lineman there. So we'll go ahead and do that. Vikings pick 230. We are ventured round seven. All right. We're going to probably have to search a little bit for the Vikings here, but I think I have an idea who we're looking for. 
Um, yep, I think this would be good enough. Uh, Dylan McMahon, uh, center from North Carolina, NC State. And the Vikings here again for the final time, I believe. Oops. Okay. Ten percent. No. Brandon Coleman. No. Oh, here we go. C.J. Hansen guard uh, from Holy Cross Crusaders. Twenty percent. Ten percent lead over the next uh, player. So let's get that for the Vikings. Packers, 245, uh, their second to last draft pick. They seem to collect A3 picks uh, quite a bit, so good for them with that. I remember Carl Brooks uh, was somebody I had my eye on who wound up with the Packers last season, and he's done some decent things uh, as far as I can tell. Um, oh, <laughs> I think this is where I get to his brother for the Packers. Yep, they seem to really like him uh, going there as uh, – uh, backup quarterback role, I guess. So we're going to get him for the Packers here. And it's going to be like uh, when they drafted Jordan Love all over again, isn't it? Just kidding, just kidding. Here we go, the Lions' uh, last pick. I can't remember if I said it or not, but I don't intend to draft kickers or punters. Um, otherwise, I might do that here. But here I'm sticking to like offensive and defensive type players who might have special team value. So... Um, See who we can find. 7% there. Ooh, 12% there. Don't really need tight end, though. They just uh, uh, brought back Bar Brock Wright or ensured that he was going to stay. Plus, there's James Mitchell. Ooh, 17%. Layden Robinson. Uh, four percent there. That that's close enough, I think. Especially if the Packers want him right there. And this is the final pick of this mock draft, and uh, and it's the Packers' turn. And I think I have an idea who this might be. I think it's a safety we're looking for. Yep, Tyler Owens, a whopping 25% lead over the 11%. So, all right, we got through that one. And then just to summarize this uh, uh, mock draft, um, and this is kind of the general idea. I'm just going to read off of this paper, and uh, um, it'll be similar. It won't be exactly the same, but it'll be similar. But uh, uh, first round, uh, Caleb Williams to the Bears, uh, Dallas Turner to the Bears, Byron Murphy to the Vikings. Uh, Marshawn Nealon to the Vikings, Amarius Mims to the Packers, um, or no, the other tackle to the Packers, and then uh, Kool-Aid McKinstry to the Lions. Round two, uh, Edgar and Cooper to the Packers, Jerry and Jones to the Packers, uh, Christian Boyd to the Lions. Round three, uh, Sion Vaki to the Lions, Ben Sinat to the Bears, Michael Hall Jr. to the Packers, uh, Trevin Wallace uh, to the Packers. Round four, uh, Donovan Jennings to the Vikings, Elijah Jones or and or Cam Hart to the Bears. This is fourth round. Packers, Zach, uh, Zach Zinter to the Packers, and then Charles Turner to the Vikings. Round five, uh, Dylan Johnson to the Vikings, Nehemiah Pritchett uh, to the Lions, uh, Dallin Hawker, Hulker to the Vikings, and Kitan Oladopo uh, to the Packers. Round six, Miles Murphy to the Vikings, uh, Brennan Jackson to the Lions, uh, Tyron Hopper to the Packers, Hunter Norazad to the Lions, and then Tanner Bortolini uh, to the Packers. Um, round seven, uh, CJ Hansen to the Vikings, Keith Randolph Jr. Uh, to the Vikings, uh, Tanga Vailoa to the Packers, uh, Layden Robinson to the Lions, and then Tyler Owens to the Packers. I know that recap isn't exactly as the same as the mock draft that I, that I just did, but it's kind of the general idea 
of what we're looking for with uh, a mock draft uh, of this caliber. So uh, feel free to let me know uh, kindly. Let me know in the comments what you thought of this type of mock draft. Does this give you a good idea of kind of what to expect when the uh, mock draft comes? Do you think uh, seeing something like this right now will uh, – uh, have people kind of looking and thinking and thinking, oh my gosh, maybe there's needs to be trades up or trades down, or uh, they're on to this player for this team. So we got to go ahead and uh, cut in front and get this player before the other team in our division gets it. And does this just kind of inspire kind of the thinking you want? I know it's not like the traditional kind of mock draft you see on YouTube and you're thinking you're trying to impress people with, ooh, is this look like a good mock draft? My goal with this is just to try to figure out the idea and the shape of how it might turn out to look based on the top 30 visits, which I do heavily take into consideration with trying to figure out which teams will try to draft which players in all rounds of the, of the draft. And I'll probably do a, a separate one based on the combine interviews and uh, you know, private meetings and that sort of thing at a certain time if I have time. But, you know, like top 30 visits, I figured that would be a good thing. And I'm going to do one more top 30 visits mock draft for the Lions uh, uh, two nights before the draft night uh, when they've had more come out. But hopefully by then uh, they'll use theirs because I think it's kind of strange that the Lions haven't had uh, so many uh uh, top 30 interviews yet but they might still have more coming out well maybe they're trying to withhold it and being strategic about it um whereas like the bears have had several top 30 interviews even though they ha only have four draft picks and then you know the vikings and the package are kind of uh mixed their kind of average like uh as well as with their draft picks so um, does this hopefully this uh, gives you a not better idea of not just like where the Lions are, but the whole NFC North. So that way you have an idea of what the other NFC North teams might try to how they might try to combat counter the Lions and then how the Lions might try to counter them and vice versa. So, um, yeah, that's it for this video. And always remember, I'm just trying to help.